Good morning from Tennessee. Woo. Sideways. Sideways. We're going to have to go this way today. I don't know why with Facebook. Heidi, can you just help me here for one second, and then we're... Sure. We're not, we're not back on the screen. We're getting there. So sorry, ladies. <laughs> ladies, gents, sewers and quilters. just get one person to please send us a quick comment and say that Please. we're yep. right side up. Someone said we're the right way. We're the right you way. Can hear us. Yep. You can hear us. You can see us. And I can't see the comments, but that's okay. there. Okay. Perfect. I think we're ready to go. This is take two of Sweet Pea Quilting's Facebook Live today. And today we thought that we would show you some of our favorite quilting tools and notions and tell you why we like them and as you know um, if you watch the little video I did for the newsletter I talked about having the right tools makes the job so much easier and that's the case just not in a single project but I think throughout everything that we do in quilting if you have the right equipment the job sometimes takes way less time and um, seems to be a little easier so we thought that we would go over a few things with that we like today so we've talked to everybody in the store uh, everybody that works in the store and gathered all their com comments and information and we're going to share them with you but first what we thought we would ask of you is if you could just send us a little comment and tell us where you're watching us from is it sunny is it rainy are you in Parksville? Are you in Florida? Could be someplace that's snowing. It, it could be. Have a blizzard. Sure. Yes. Oh. I'm sure there's a blizzard somewhere, just not here on the island. Thank and let's hope it doesn't come. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so just send us a little comment and just let us know where you're watching us from. Always interesting to see where people are from. And we certainly enjoy you chiming in and uh, letting us know where you're uh, visiting us from. So we're going to start with... Um, this is one of my favorite things, and it's not necessarily quilting, but it's in the quilting world. It's snowing world. in Salmon Arm. Sorry. It's snowing in Salmon Arm. It's snowing in Salmon Arm. Well, better yeah. Salmon Arm than Parksville. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do so it. These, okay, so this is number one, and these are wool dryer bolts. I use these at home and have for a long time. So they come in a package of four, and the package of four is $32. And these are handmade with New Zealand wool. So you get four of these, and what they recommend is that you put three in the dryer. And this eliminates you having to use dryer sheets or softener in your wash. And it also, these your clothes dry faster because they bounce around and they separate everything and you can use them for over a thousand dries so they will last forever i use these at home sometimes one of them mysteriously goes missing and I'm, until i put on that next pair of jeans or that shirt because they'll go down the sleeve and they'll get stuck and i think <laughs> where did this dryer ball go where could it go might then, get caught in the in the fitted sheets oh, okay. in the corner. Yes. Yeah. So I really like these. They this is item number one. If you're interested in purchasing this, just uh, give us a comment and say you'd like to purchase item number one. And what we're also going to ask today is comment. And then after the shows, after we're done here, would you mind sending us an email? Because sometimes we miss a comment or you've bought more than one item and we miss one of the items. So we're trying to make this um, as easy as possible. So if you wouldn't mind just sending an email to sweetp.quilting at shaw.ca just to follow up. 
then we'll make sure you don't get lost through the comments and the cracks. So item number one is the dryer balls. You get a pack of four and they're $32. Okay, so this is another one of my favorite things. And you see, I use this at the store all the time. And this is a ruler grip. This is item number two. And it's a, a grip that you attach to your bigger ruler. They do come in smaller sizes, but I like the big ones the best. And what they do is, once you attach these, when you're doing your cutting, it distributes your weight across a greater part of the ruler. Because you know, you get your cutter and you start cutting, you're holding your ruler, and then your ruler inevitably slips. So you, you can grip this, it stays on here very well. It's a suction, so it's easy to apply. And you just put your hand down, put that down, and just do your cutting. It's, it will save you a lot of frustration when your ruler moves. Because, you know, if you're going from one end to the other, that's a, quite a long space. Not so much if you're just doing six inch cuts, but when you're doing a long cut like that, we sell uh, these in the store we have for years. They're very popular. They just pop off with these clips, pop on with these clips, put it down in your big ruler and just slice away. You'll find these are a big help, uh, particularly if you're cutting larger quilts or if you do a lot of cutting as opposed to using pre-cuts. This little ruler grip is item number two and it's $27. Can you take a second and also talk about the safety aspect using this? Yes, very good point. The reason I started using this is I do a lot of fabric cutting here at the store. I put my hand down and I sliced it. It healed, I put my hand down, I sliced it. It healed, I put my hand down, I sliced it. I finally went to the doctor and because that one needed stitches. And the doctor said, whatever you're doing, you need to find a different solution because you just can't keep slicing that same little part of your finger. So it was born out of necessity and I'm slice free since then. And it's really a lot easier to do some of your cutting when you're cutting up your quilt kits or your quilt fabric. It's a little awkward when you first start using it if you've not used one before. Yes. But once you use it a few times, it feels very, um, very slippery and unsafe if you're cutting without it. Yes. So hang in there with it. Okay. It's a good thing. So where are we coming from today? Have we got any comments? Well, we've got somebody from Scotland oh. and they don't have snow. We've got a lot of people that are local. We have Penny Kicklets from Edmonton where it's minus 13. Bless them. Bless yeah. them dearly. Yes. yes, exactly. Okay. So our next item is, you've seen these, I'm sure. They are wool pressing mats. They come in a variety of sizes. This one is the 17 inch square, and I like to use this one, and I'll tell you why. This is another one of my favorite things. They also come in a little smaller size, which is 13 by 13, or the eight by eight. So the eight by eight is $34. The 13 by 13 is $65. And this 17 inch square is $92. So what I like about these, there's a number of things I like about them. The biggest thing is, is sometimes you don't have a great big space to set up your ironing board and your iron and your machine, or you're traveling and you, you, know, you can't bring your ironing board. This acts like an ironing board. You can put this on a counter, whether it be a laminate counter, a stone counter, a quartz counter, you can press and the steam from the iron or the iron will not damage your counter. So it's like you've got your own little portable pressing station. If you want to set this up right next to your machine, you can do that. So set up your iron, set up your machine. You don't even have to get up. If you're not counting your steps that day, you can just sew and you can press right here. The other thing that it does is your, when you put your block down and you're pressing it or your fabric down, the wool heats up and so you're pressing with your iron from the top and the heat of the wool presses from the underside so it's like you're getting a, almost like a double little press on any one of your blocks or your fabric 
These are very popular. They work very well. They're half inch thick, so you don't have to worry about them wearing out. You don't have to worry about them having a little divot in them. I use one of these at home all the time, and I can't sew without it. I have some people coming in now saying that that's their favorite thing as well. And somebody says they even iron napkins on it. Just put your napkins oh, on it. what a good idea. Right. Yeah, so. Yeah, so if you don't yep. want to drag out your ironing board, this is a perfect little gift or for yourself or put it in your sewing room, put it next to your sewing machine. So they come in three sizes and it's item number three, the wool pressing mat. So, okay, so in this modern world where we don't use chalk and stencils anymore to draw our quilting patterns, probably one of the most requested asks I get in the store is, is there a white temporary marking pen? There's a couple of them on the market and this is one of my favorites. This is by a company called Bohen, and it is a white erasable marking pen. It's $15, which is a lot more than the friction pens, but obviously it's harder to make the white. You don't see it very often, and there's a few companies that make them. Uh, this company seems to be the most popular and seems to work the best. So this is a white erasable pen. It's $15. I'll just let Heidi get a close-up of that. And you can, if you're doing anything with dark gray, navy, or black, you can do your white marking, and it's a fine line marker, and then it will erase with steam. Sometimes if you use the chalk on the white, you get that little residue line that is harder to get rid of. So not a lot of white um, temporary erasable pens on the market, but this is one of them. And I really like to use this on the darker fabrics when you're needing to do some um, either quilting lines or measuring lines for your project. So this is item number four and it's $15 and it's a white erasable pen. There you go. And right along with that, now we're going to go to the friction pens. You've probably all seen these, but sometimes I'm surprised. There's a lot of people that haven't. There's a lot of people that haven't. So these are along the same lines as the white one, but they are in different colors and it does not come in white. So it's a fine tip. You can see it's just like using a pen. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna mark just with this on your fabric, just like that. So you're, you can see them, it's a fine mark. If I was doing stitching and then you do your stitching, you don't even have to hold the iron on it. You can just hold the iron above it and those lines will all disappear. So these are great if you're marking your finished quilt size or if you're trimming something or you're doing your binding and you're putting it together. Uh, very useful in many aspects of sewing. They come in a great variety of colors. Um, lights, darks, kind of mediums. There is a black, but there is not a white. So these are $6. Great little stocking stuffer for your quilty friends. And uh, we have these in a variety of colors. Every quilter has them. You'll find them in any little sewing room. But if you haven't heard of these or you're just new to sewing or quilting, they're temporary marking pens that disappear with steam. Six dollars each and they're called friction pens. And we always carry them here at the store. And they're in item number five. So, One of the best items invented for quilting, in my opinion. Yes. Love it. Okay, magnetic pin bowls. This is our next item. This is item number six. And it is a magnetic pin bowl as opposed to a push your pin in the bowl. And what we like about this is that if you're sewing and you're concentrating, I'll show you that, and you see the pins will all stick to it, okay? And if you're sewing and you're, you're taking your pins out, you can just, you don't even have to stop to push it as you're sewing and it, it's gonna land on there all the time because the mag magnet is going to attract the little steel pin. So I love to use these. You don't have to put them in, you don't have to take them out. 
if you happen to drop your pin bowl like we all do then just go on the floor turn this upside down and it will i'll show you this if let's say we drop that this will there you go so you're not on your hands and knees trying to find all your <laughs> pins we do this on the long arm all the time and we have a big magnetic pin bowl there because we put it on one of the rails then we move the rail pin bowl drops pins go everywhere so this is a magnetic bottom doesn't interfere with your sewing machine even if you have a computerized machine set it right next to your sewing machine and then you don't even have to look you can just toss your pins there and they are done and easy to just pick them up too then so you're not having to pull it put it in put it out i know some people like that or they put the mm -hmm. tomato on their hands yeah we happen to like this because it's just easy to for them to come off and on and great if you happen to drop it and we've all done that that would work for paper clips too it would work for paper clips or it you would work for you mm -hmm. see there's a, a one of these little wonder clips on there so it'll work needles as well so these run about 25 dollars but you'll only ever need one yeah right unless you're and like once you have you one you, you yeah. think how did i ever live how did you live that? without it yeah. yeah so if you haven't tried one of these give it a give it a whirl you know it's not a huge dollar investment and maybe just something different from what you've got now so worth it so that's item number six and it's a magnetic pin bowl okay so this seems so simple a seam ripper you know how many seam rippers are out there <laughs> on the market our favorite is by clover the seam ripper is twelve dollars and we always carry it in stock and i'll tell you why we all know what seam rippers are for. If you're a quilter or a sewer, you can't survive without them. So I'll tell you why we like this particular brand. Sometimes the handle is really big and then it's too clunky. Sometimes it's a tiny little one that came as an accessory with your sewing machine when you got it 40 years ago. And it's so small, your hand can't reach it. This has a rubber grip. It's the perfect size of your hand. It's not too big. It's not too small. Your fingers go there, whether you're left-handed or right-handed. The, the tip of it is really sharp and it has this little red ball. There are a lot of seam rippers out there that don't have the little red ball. And this, the, putting the red ball on here prevents you from accidentally ripping what you don't want to rip. And if you don't know, not only does the tip allow you to unpick a stitch or two, that is a blade down in there. So if you want to get really brave and put this in your seam that needs ripping, you can just go straight up and it will slice your whole seam. You have That's to be very careful. Ball side down. Yeah, ball side down. Don't put the tip in because there's a tendency that your hand's gonna lift up and you'll put a rip in your um, piece of fabric. So ball side down, put it in your seam, test it to make sure it's, you're not cutting your fabric, but just the seam. And then you can just go straight along and it will take your whole seam apart. I know a lot of people are afraid to do that, not me. Once you try it, yes, get a little bit yeah. confident. So you want something with it that's got this protected so it doesn't um, put a hole in your fabric. A nice sharp point there, uh, a nice razor sharp blade almost there, easy to hold, good for left-handed or right-handed people, not too big, not too small. So something simple, it's $12 and it's the Clover Seam Ripper. We've sold them for years and they sell and sell and sell. I have, I thought that I had the perfect seam ripper at home until I used that one in the store one day and that was it. I. Yeah. Walked from the back to the front and bought one and have them look back. Love it. So something simple, but just again makes your life way easier, right? Okay, so our next little is a little storage unit and it's called the stash and stow. Okay, so these come in two sizes. This is item number eight and it's $19 and it's called the stash and stow. So you, they come in two sizes. This is the larger of the two sizes. So you're at your sewing machine. You can put your friction pans 
Have we got a friction pen close by? You can uh, put your yep. pens. You can put your little rulers. No, you can't put your little rulers on that one. Your um, seam ripper. Your seam ripper. Anything you need. Yep. Oh yeah, there's close your seam pad. ripper. Yep. So you and the, these are rubber, you see, and there's some give to them. So you could put a ruler through there if you wanted. If you look at the rubber. difference between the two, and yet they both fit absolutely fine in there. Yep. So if you wanted to put some small rulers, you can. Your scissors, if you wanted to put small pairs of scissors, those just open and they're pliable and flexible. Stuff all your stuff next to your sewing machine so it's ready whenever you need it. Yep. So this Very is uh, called the Stash and Stow. This is the larger size. It's $19. It comes in a variety of comes colors. comes in a variety of colors, and we have all the colors on order. So just a great little place to store all your quilting supplies next to your sewing machine or in your sewing room even. So, oh, and somebody says it's a good place to store your lipstick because you should always sew with lipstick on. Well, Love what that, a great Chrisanne. Uh, what a great idea. <laughs> yep. So there you go. We'll find more uses for some of these tools than we could have ever imagined. And then you can let us know what you're using them for. Yeah. Okay, next up is we're going to talk about a few rulers. We all have the big 6x24 because we need that for our cutting. Then there's lots of, oh Lord, there's so many sizes of rulers on the market. So which is the best for you and why? Well, I'll tell you, there's a few sizes that we use here in the store when we're working on store samples or projects, in addition to the big six by 24. And the first one, I really like this. This is item number nine, and it is four inches by 14 inches. This is by Omni Grid, and it is $29 for this size ruler. The reason I like this ruler is it's big enough that I can put my hand down when I'm cutting. It's not long enough if I'm just squaring blocks or I'm just sub cutting or whatever I'm doing. Sometimes you don't need the great big one there. You just need a small one that you can control nicely with your hand. And you can do that with this. Does all your cutting wide enough that it fits your hand, not too long so it interferes with anything. It's one of my favorite sizes of rulers to use um, after the initial big cut where you need your six by 24. So this is a four by 14 inch ruler by OmniGrid and it's $29 for this ruler. I have one here and I have one at home that I use when I'm sewing at home. Now this is Karen. I don't know if you're watching this morning, Karen. This is Karen's favorite ruler. It's one of my favorites okay, too. Okay, it's one of Donna's favorites. So yep. you talk about it for a yep. minute. I'll... Well, I just, people that know me know that I do a lot of uh, small blocks and tiny things, a lot of applique and, and Lori Holt piecing and things like that. So I just really like it. It's three and a half by three and a half. It's small, I can I can square things with it. If you're using charm squares, yep, and you're sub cutting absolutely. charm squares, yeah. You bet, yep. It's easy to see. Yep. I just so three and a half it. by three and a half. It's item number ten, and it is fifteen dollars. And it's by Omni Grip. So the difference between Omni Grid and Omni Grip, this is yellow, this is fluorescent green. So that's the that's the only difference between Omni Grid G R I D and Omni Grip G R I P. So. Sometimes a little ruler makes your job easier if you're doing smaller squares or you're doing your half square triangles. You just need a little ruler. Karen and Donna both swear by this. Yeah. Um, this is item number 10. It's a little three and a half by three and a half ruler. And again, I used it here at the store one day. I used Karen's for something and I thought, oh my heavens, I need that. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you, you just don't even think that you need it until you try it and then you think, oh, that's a cat's meow. Is it a need or is it a want? Well, it depends <laughs> on how you look at it. I need it, my husband thinks I want it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and our last ruler, this one works well for anything that requires a pre-cut strip. 
So if, if you didn't have a jelly roll or you were using a pattern that called for a two and a half inch strip, this again is by Omni Gri Grip. So it's the fluorescent green. This is two and a half by 18 inches. This ruler is item number 11 and it's $31 for this ruler. I never knew that that's what that ruler was for. Yes. So if you're doing something that requires a jelly roll and you don't have a jelly roll, this is the perfect ruler to use. And two and a half inches is a very popular measurement in quilting, binding. A lot of people do their binding Absolutely. two and a half inches. So this is a handy little one to keep. Doesn't take up a lot of space. Big enough that you can do your cutting or you know your strips. Because normally your fabric's folded in half, so just up you go. And if you don't have, or you're wanting to make two and a half inch strips, this is the perfect size ruler to be able to do it. So this is two and a half by 18. It's item number 11, and it is $31. So, on to item number- I'm putting this aside. Okay. Over here, yep. with my name on it. There you go. But. How are we all doing? Where are we? On, on our comments, everybody's well, happy. Yeah, we've got somebody from New Mexico. Oh, nice! And, and thank um, you for joining us. Yeah, and people are saying about the rulers; they they okay. all like them. Everybody's got their little favorite. Everybody's but, got their little yeah, favorite. But somebody yes. loves Jane Willis. Loves the two and a half by eighteen ruler. There you go. Yeah, great. So the next thing we're going to talk about is this is one of my favorite products that I sell in the store. It's item number twelve. And it is called Stiff Stuff. And it's exactly that. It You can use this it, instead of using foam. Like sometimes if you're making a tote bag, it calls for bozal foam or some type of Biani's foam. This product is way thinner, but you get the same, if not better, result from this product. It's 20 inches wide, which is normally the width of most tote bags that we make. And it's sold on the bolt, and this is $15 a meter. So you would need one meter to do a bag, because generally that's what it takes. The nice thing with this is, even if you've got layers, it's stiff, but it's porous. So you, you will have no trouble getting your needle through this. And even if you have two layers to sew, you'll have no trouble getting your layers and you know when you're doing a tote bag when you got to do the corners and it's so thick because you've got your layers of fabric your lining interfacing then this interfacing this is a breeze to sew with and work with and the best thing about it is here's a little tote bag that i made using this product so you can see that the tote bag itself stands nicely it's not going to collapse like if you were at the grocery store trying to load your groceries in there. It's going to stand nicely. If you want to collapse this and put it in your trunk once you're done or put it in your big bag or whatever, it collapses down and then it comes right back up. So it's like the little Energizer Bunny. It keeps going and going and going. So scrunch this down, open it up. Very durable. You know, when I, I was talking about the corners, makes it so much easier to do your corners on your bag. Easy to top stitch through, easy to quilt through. And we use it on almost all of our bags here in the store because it just requires the one layer and it makes your project, sewing your project very smooth and you're not struggling at the end when you've got all your layers and you're trying to put them together. So the, the product is called Stiff Stuff it's $15 a meter. You should just try it. Um, you know, make a little wallet or make a little tote bag like this and you'll be hooked on it. It's such a nice product to work with and to use. And I'll just talk about our favorite little capping fabric that I made this um, bag out of. We don't have this fabric in the store right now, but we are gonna be receiving it. I believe it's February of 2021. This has been one of the most favorite fabrics here in the store. And I phoned to reorder it. My supplier said, oh, sorry, we can't get it anymore. I said, oh, no, cannot be. Really? 
So I must have complained long and loud enough because they phoned to me a few months later and said, guess what? We bought, we found some more and we bought some more. So it, there's just something about the colors, the style, the scale of this fabric that seems to appeal to so many people. And we've got so many campers. So we're not talking fabric today, but I thought I'd bring that up because somebody's going to say, do you have that fabric? I don't, but it is coming in February. So Stiff Stuff is the product. Love to use it. Easy to work with. Collapses down. Comes right back up. Lightweight. Makes your sewing project super easy. Okay. So we talk, kind of talked about this last, when we were doing the microwave bowls in our um, video. This is a product made by Pellon, and Pellon's been in business for 90 plus years. So, you know, they got it right. This is item number 13, and it's called Wrap and Zap. So, if you read the package, it says that it is specifically made for, it's 100% natural cotton batting, microwave safe. And if you watch the video on the microwave bowls, you know, the batting has to be cotton, the thread has to be cotton, and the fabric has to be cotton. So if you buy this and keep it in the bag, you know exactly what it is. It's designed, it says right on it, perfect for microwavable projects like insulated potato bags, casserole warmers, and microwave bowls. So great product. The supplier can't keep this in stock. It's very popular. It's sold in the bag like this, which is one yard by 45 inches, and this is $15, but they're, it's so popular in the bag, they're out of it, but they had it on the bolt, so I also have it on the bolt. When they get the bags back in, we'll order some more bags, but for now, we do have it, so if you're working on some Christmas projects and you're looking to make sure you've got the right batting, this is the perfect product for all your little microwave projects. It's $15 and it's item number 13. Wrap and zap. Okay, so our jelly roll tube maker, we showed you this kind of last month, but it, I just love this product so much. We're gonna, it's on our favorite things list. So it is called a jelly roll tube maker. It's $27 and this is what it looks like, okay? So that opens like that. And you can see that's a really wide opening. So if you're doing anything jelly roll, you know it's two and a half inches. And the batting are cut just a little smaller, maybe two and a quarter. And if you read any patterns, they tell you, you need to fold that over, you need to fold that over, you need to fold that over, and then sew it. So you end up, sometimes you miss, sometimes it's, it's not the same width, Sometimes you run off there because it's a number of layers. This tool, I mean, I've made a number of these bags without this tool and I will never not use this tool when making a jelly roll rug, a jelly roll tree skirt, a jelly roll bag, jelly roll placemats, anything you're using or anything you're making, you, you need to use this little notion. So what you're gonna do is, you're just gonna put your, my batting and my fabric, and then I'm just gonna get a pin. So you just put them together. You just put them together, and then you can see this little line. You can pull it through, and once you see it at the end here, I'm just gonna turn it my way so I can see it. Pull it through, it's coming. It takes just a bit to get it started, but once you get it started, there it is. I'll pull it through. Okay, so there you go. So I've pulled it through, and you go right to your sewing machine. Uh, no, you can let go. Yeah. You go right to your sewing machine, and you will see that it is perfectly folded. Oh, look at that. And then you just, that's what you do, and stitch. And you just pull this along, and you see it's just gonna fold over. It is the slickest little tool to use. It'll take you half the time to sew your strips using this product, as opposed to stopping, turning, stitching, stopping, turning, stitching. Just put this in your machine, and then as that's going through your machine, you're just pulling that, and it will 
fold this perfectly. So well worth the $27 if you like to do this type of quilting projects or you're, you know, you're making a, a batch of something for somebody. Makes your life way easier. It fits a two and a half inch strip perfectly. Slices along like that. And if you want to iron this first, you can iron it and then sew it. Or I just sit at the machine, like once it's here, and I just stitch along. So this is item number 14. It's called the Jelly Roll Tube Maker. A must have if you're doing this type of project. And it's $27 for this tube maker. So item that's item number 14. Someone's asking if you can make, or if you can use it without the batting. Yes, if you, you can, can just use make it without bias. the batting. Yep. Yes. Okay. If you wanted to do wide, yes, you sure yep. could. Yep. Okay. Wonderful. Yep. So there you go. Use it for whatever works for you. Okay. So the next thing we're going to show you is a rotating cutting mat. So, you know, if you're making a project and it says, you know, make 97 eight inch squares and then you then it asks you to square them up which means you want to make sure that they're all eight by eight so what you would normally do is you'd put it down and you would get your ruler and you'd cut there then you turn it and you'd cut there then you turn it you'd cut there and you turn it and you cut there but how do you know it's still a square because you just kept turning it with this rotating cutting mat and this is mine from home uh, they come in various sizes. Uh, the size that we have in the store is 14 by 14. It's item number 15. It's 14 by 14 and it's $65. But if you, can you pass me a little ruler? I'm just gonna yes, show them sure. how, to, how this works. So if you haven't got one of these, they're worth the investment. So let's say this needed to be a five by five square. So I'm going to put my ruler down and I'll just stand up to do this cutting. Okay. So now instead of picking this up, I'm just gonna turn this. And I'm gonna put my ruler down and I'm going to slice it. I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna put my ruler down and I'm gonna slice it. And one more, turn it, put my ruler down and slice it. So whatever size block you want, you're gonna end up with a, a perfect size block that is at either a true rectangle or a true square because the block hasn't moved and it's the ruler that's doing the moving. So if you wanted this five by five, it's perfect five by five. I cut that the wrong way, but just to demonstrate to you that you put your block down, you do your trimming, you're not moving your block, you're not turning your block, you're turning your mat, and you just take it with the edge of your fingers and you just turn it from side to side to side. So if you like to do the type of quilting where you need to square your blocks up, this is a worthwhile investment because your blocks are all gonna be perfect size. Just like people ask, how do I square up a quilt? How do you square up a block? This makes your job so much easier because you know if it's supposed to be five by five, you can see it right on the ruler. You didn't put it down and, and it got turned a little bit or you're shy here. You just put the block down, get your measure and go all the way around four times. One, two, three, four, and it's done. So this is a rotating cutting mat and I'll just show you how it works on the back, just so you see. There's a disc on the back that the back sits in, and so that just goes like that. So store these flat, because remember all of our cutting boards and mats have to be stored flat so they don't bow or they don't get a wow in them. So this is item number 15. It's a rotating cutting mat. This would be a great gift for a quilter who doesn't have one of these. Because again, this is something that you buy once and then you'll have it forever. It's 14 by 14 and it is $65 for that size of mat. They do come smaller, uh, but the one we have here in the store is 14 by 14. Okay, so Schmetz. Our next product is by Schmetz. 
and Schmetz are needle makers. We're all familiar with that name. We've probably got tons of Schmetz needles in our sewing boxes. They came out with these last year, and these are called non-stick needles. So if you do raw edge applique, you know that you have to finish your edges. And as you're doing your stitching around the edges, whether it be a blanket stitch or whether it be a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch, you know that your sewing machine needle gets gummed up. A lot of people keep little alcohol swabs next to their machine. A lot of people use um, wipes just to get that glue from the, the residue from the fusible webbing. That's what it is. And it comes out as you're doing your stitching and then your needle gets gummy. Well, Schmitz came up with these brilliant needles that are non-stick. So they're like a gunmetal gray. So you wouldn't have trouble determining which they are in your barrage of needles if one comes out of the case or you're looking to put one in. They're the only needle that Schmetz makes that's this, they call it gunmetal. And they come in a variety of sizes. We've got them in 70-10s and 80-12s. If you're a raw edge applique person, this will make your job like $12 for these needles. You get five needles. So less than $2 a needle. Hours of aggravation gone. So sometimes, again, just having the right product and the right tool for your project um, um, makes your life a whole lot easier. So this is item number 16. They're $12 and they're Schmetz non-stick needles. Okay, so on to item number 17. You don't have a screen, Maria. I don't have the video, but I can see that people are still able to see the video. So okay. that's okay. Okay. All right, so this is item number 17 and it is called photo fabric. It comes in packages and you get five sheets in a package. They're a regular letter size, eight and a half by 11 in size. And they're designed to go in your ink jet printer, not a laser printer, but an ink jet printer. And I'll say that um, Gail that works here and does the long arm quilting, who I think is watching this morning, um, she was using, wanting to use some of this photo fabric for a project and I had it on order. It didn't come in with my order. So she went elsewhere and she bought photo fabric because she was trying to get her project done. She said it was the worst stuff she's ever used. This feels just like quilting cotton once you peel it off and your photo is adhered to it. So it's not going to be stiff, it's not going to be a loose weave, it's not going to be hard to iron. I've sold this for years, nobody's ever come back and told me they've had an issue with it or a problem with it. Once you, using your inkjet printer, put your photo on this paper, it is permanent. So the quilt can be washed and used. You use this in your inkjet printer, it acts just like a piece of paper with fabric and then you just peel the paper off the back of the fabric, almost like sticky, you know, like a label. You steal, you peel the back of the, the uh, it off, and you, then you can use it in your quilt block. So works well, five sheets to a package. I've sold it for years. It's called Photo Fabric. It's $31 for five sheets of eight and a half by 11. And that would be enough to do, you know, if you were putting a few quilts or a few uh, pictures in your quilts. And if you're more savvy at printing than I am, you could print more than one on a sheet. Myself, I, I'm, I couldn't do that, but there are a number of you out there that I know can. So it's not like you're gonna be wasting it. Um, great investment if you're wanting to do a photo quilt, because you wanna make sure that your photos last. You wanna make sure that your, uh, this fabric feels just like the rest of your quilt. And if you use this product, it will. So that's item number 17, photo fabric, and it's $31 for a package of five. It'd be a great idea just to design your own little um, quilt labels. You know how 
want to put me oh, by that's grandma a good idea. Yeah. with love or whatever and um yeah then you could probably get some help and print a bunch of them cut or, them up and put or them how about made by grandma with a few glasses of wine yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> we could do that too okay so we don't this, wine and sew yeah, at the same time that's right there's yeah that's the rule you yep. can sew or you can drink wine but uh, i don't know if you want to mix the two not good so then you really need that seam ripper that we've got <laughs> So this is a, a thread stand, an adjustable thread stand, because a lot of you like to sew with the bigger spools of thread beside your sewing machine. And your sewing machine is not designed that the pin will hold because some of them go sideways. So you need somewhere to store, besides a coffee cup, to store your thread. So this is, if you can see, this is item number 18. And I'll tell you, it is $27. And you can see that you've got the base. And then this is a telescopic um, piece of metal that extends up to whatever size you need. So it will sit at the top, just at the top of your machine, very close to where your thread is. You can put your big spool on that. And you just sit this right behind your machine, just behind your spool pin. Put your big spool of thread on it and then just thread your... Uh, sewing machine the same way you would with your regular thread so it's uh, keeps it sturdy keeps it standing and allows you to use the bigger spools on any style of sewing machine that you have so if it's one that's got the uh, spool pin sideways this will solve that issue you can use the bigger spools and they work just fine in your home sewing machine. I use a big spool on mine all yep. the time. If you're going to do a lot of sewing, you're going to save yourself a ton of money on thread. Yes. Um, if you, you know, do this investment and then buy the big spools, you save a lot of money. Yep. So this is $27. It's item number 18 and it's an adjustable thread stand. Okay. Okay. So these were happened by chance. Somebody told me about these, and I can't remember who, but whoever you are, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so, so these are actually little brushes, and they are, if you can read this, it says, for precise applications of adhesive, solvents, and paints. Well, we found a different use for these. They come, as you can see, this is item number 19. They're called, we call them micro brushes. You get 25 in a pack, and this is what they look like. So this is a plastic piece, and it's got this tiny little, almost cottony felt tip that is solid on there. This little thing will get into the nooks and crannies in your sewing machine that you didn't even know exist. And you will be amazed at what you can fish out of your sewing machine in the form of dust bunnies just using these and this little tip will not come off you don't have to worry about it getting stuck in your machine or jamming somewhere and interfering with the operation of your machine you put this little thing in and you'll just keep pulling that fluff out and pulling that fluff out and pulling that fluff out do you remember the time that we tried those at a class here yes and some people said oh my machine is clean i just cleaned it don't need to try those and we said well just for the fun of it try them and see what you what you think and they were amazed they said yes. oh my god like i had no idea i thought it was clean where did that stuff yeah. come from yeah. And it goes everywhere in your machine. So open your bobbin and you, you can get fish around in there and drag it. It's almost up. like it's magnetic or whatever. Almost. It just, just so it. it's $8. There's a pack. They get 25 to a pack. And they're called micro brushes. This is a great stocking stuffer. Let the lady or let your quilter know what they're for. Because they'll think, well, I don't paint. Um, but they're great. So, uh, a use that they didn't even think about. They're great for cleaning your sewing machine if you're just looking to get rid of dust bunnies. So um, that's item number 19, and they're micro brushes. And we have somebody saying those are the best little brushes. I use those every day. Keep one right by my machine. Someone else is saying those are great, and they are truly great. Truly great. Okay, so item number 19 today is 505 spray. This is a temporary adhesive. So if you are doing quilts, table runners, placemats, mug mats, and you don't want to pin your three layers together, this product 
is a temporary adhesive. So you would spray your backing, you would put your batting on it, you would spray your batting, you would put your top on it. Gail, that works here, had never used this product before. She always pinned her three layers together. But even when you pin, your project shifts a little bit depending on the size. The bigger the project, the more it shifts. So we were talking about this and she said, I've never used this. And she took some home and she made placemats and she's the converted. She couldn't believe, like once this glue sets and it just takes a few minutes, your product, your project, sorry, is not shifting at all. You don't have to worry about the back slipping or you're running out of room or once those three layers are together, it acts like one layer. Um, it, it doesn't have the best of smell, but you don't need to use a lot of it. It goes a long way. And once you use this, it's like you won't go back to the pins because this is so much more convenient you can use it on any size project. And if you so want to do a queen size quilt, you can use this on a queen size quilt. Anything from a mug mat to a queen size quilt, it's a temporary glue. And then after you're done, you can, whatever your project is, you can wash it if you're worried about the smell of the glue. But it works very well, does what it's supposed to do, just temporarily puts your three layers together, makes your quilting a breeze. Then you're not stopping and pulling out pins or they got stuck in your needle and any of that. So it's 505 spray. It comes in a small can and a large can. This is the small can and it is $23 and the large can is $36. And this is item number 20. 505 spray, Gail yeah. swears by it. Do you wanna talk about not using that if they're going to bring it in for long arm quilting? Right. If you start your project and you decide, and you've put 505 spray on it, you've decided that your project's too big, um, and you're gonna bring it in for long arm quilting, the long arm machine and the 505 spray don't really work well together. So you need to wash your three pieces prior to bringing it in to be long armed. The 505 spray doesn't work on the long arm machine and we wouldn't be able to do it. So if you change your mind, and trust me, many people have, they start out quilting it themselves and then it's just too hard. We can certainly quilt your quilt, but you just have to run it through a wash and dry cycle, all your three layers, and then you can bring it in and we're happy to quilt it. Okay, so we're almost at the end here. Something as simple as a point turner. This is item number 21. It's $8 and it is a point turner. So in this day and age, when all we are doing is making masks for people we know and even people we don't know, and you're turning your mask inside out or you're turning your bowl inside out or you're turning your tote bag inside out, you always need to get to those corners. I know some people use scissors, but the danger with that is it pokes through. Some people use a chopstick. It's quite blunt. You don't get a nice corner. Something as simple as this cute little po pink polka dot point turner, $8, makes, again, the right tools make your project way easier to complete and looks professional when it's done. So I use a point turner for everything I do and you don't want it too sharp. You don't want it too dull. This is the perfect little size. It's got a nice tip, but it's not sharp or pointy. It'll give you that crisp corner you're looking for. So something as simple as a point turner, again, $8, affordable. If you don't have one of these in your sewing repertoire, you need to add one. Get rid of the chopstick, get rid of the scissors. Um, what else do they use? Bamboo skewer oh, sticks. Yeah, yeah, whatever. $8, invest in one of those. The right tools makes the project easy. I also like this um, to, if I need to, um, if I want to press my seams or something like rather than finger pressing, this is great for that along the side. Oh yeah, it works like a charm. There you go. Yep. Okay, so our last item today. We sell these at the store and we've sold a lot of them and we'll continue to sell them. This is a little travel iron. It's, you need to plug it in, but it has steam to it. A lot of the travel irons don't have a steam feature. I'll, I'll just tell you that this is the last item, number 22. It is $48, 
and it is a travel size steam iron. Uh, the, the nice, there's a number of nice things about this product. The first one being on our wool mat, this works perfectly. So if you set this up next to your sewing machine, you've got steam. If you just want to do a little bit of pressing, there you go. You've got lots of room on your wool mat to use this um, iron. It's not too hot. You've got to be careful with some of these. Clover makes a tiny little one that looks like a teardrop almost. And we did a raw edge applique class and somebody was using that to iron down their raw edge applique and it burnt their fabric. It was too hot for what they were using it for. This is not too hot. It's got a really nice steam feature. It's $48 is quite affordable. The Olicio in this travel size are over a hundred. So this is like half the price, works just as well. Great for getting in little corners. In little corners. Um, and in 2021, when we start going to retreats and cruises and everything, um, you know, classes, these are, is, it's a great little project to take. It's not heavy, will fit in your bag, works well with a mat. Um, can, you're not getting up and getting down, or if you don't have a lot of space at home and you just want to sew on your kitchen table with one of these, it's a travel size steam iron that works really well. It's item number 22 and it is $48. Plugs into a regular plug, don't need any special adapter or anything. I need to say good morning to my sister who is watching from Halifax. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And Robbie, happy birthday. Oh, uh, happy yes. birthday, Robbie. Yes, Robbie's turning 39 again this is year. Is she? Yes. Yep. Yep. So that's our little um, show for today, so to speak. We hope that we've given you some of uh, some good ideas of things that you can add or give as gifts to make your, all your projects a little more simpler. We'll just tell you our next Facebook Live will be Friday, January 22nd, 2021. And we will be uh, focusing on something totally different than today. We're trying but to find fun yes. ladies. We're trying You're to find different things to keep you interested and come up with new ideas and, and new things to do. So we thank you all for joining us today. We hope that this season, whatever it is, it is. And we all look forward to next year. If anything interests you, if you could send us a comment or call us at the store or follow email us an email. Uh, and follow up with an email, we're happy to get your order out to you. And if you just have more information or you have some questions on anything, we're happy to answer them for you. So from everyone here at Sweet Pea, happy holidays. Stay safe. That looks. Stay safe and happy 2021. Hallelujah. Yes.